I would give you guys a little spiel to qualify this poem, but I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Where is home? Is it where your telephone rings? Or where they deliver your mail? Is it where your mama lives? Is it where you come from? Or where you are now? I took a long drive to try to figure that out for myself. With the top down and the wind blowing on my face and the broken white lines of the highway melted into one, I courted visions of a young boy placing a penny upon a railroad track. Climbing a tree to pick the sweetest apricot, I see him dashing among tumbleweeds with a young version of my older brother to watch the passing train and then retrieve the flattened penny while it's still warm. I courted visions of sunny skies, emotional freedom and honesty as dark clouds are held at bay behind animate mountains of ignorance by ghosts just waiting for the right time to unleash their wrath, the torrential baptizing bath that is low desert rain. Even as a child, I could always identify with the weather in the foothills of Mount San Jacinto. Just like me, it's always unbearably cold or hot as hell, and it never, ever just sprinkles. It either, it either comes down in buckets, or it just rains real slow with drops big enough to speak as they hit the ground. The crackling of my tires upon this dirt road that separates me from a part of myself that has been missing for decades is interrupted by a small bird speaking the very same language as the slow rain telling me that I've been missed. This trip down a dirt road I've traveled a thousand times before is different. Not only because I'm in the back seat of, not only because I'm not in the back seat of that old Ford station wagon, but mainly because I've not traveled it in 25 years. All the scenery has changed, but I know this road. I could close my eyes and tread it in braille if the changes became too much to look at. As the final curve between myself and the first glimpse of my fondest childhood memories gives way to my will, my senses begin to deceive me. Sepia tones bleed into my vision. Sounds begin to lose their sharpness as emotional overload triggers a surreal state of consciousness. It's as if I'm dreaming. Even my breath shortens as I come within meters of foundation. That of my youth and of the house my father built. I pull to the side of the road once named after my grandfather and stepped out of my car to inspect an old fence that used to be made of bailing wire to keep horses in. It's made of barbed wire now to keep people out. Funny, I remember knowing our neighbors quite well and looking out for each other. Where did all this trash come from? I could hear and feel only my heart beating in my temples as a pair of rusty chains snapped taut and restrained of two mangy junkyard dogs that lose their mind upon my approach. My stability is becoming more and more tenuous by the moment and the energy from these dogs was really messing with what little comfort I could still claim. It was God that allowed me to maintain my serenity long enough to catch a glimpse of what I subconsciously came to see. There it was, that longed for link to my past, playing among the tumbleweeds shyly, as if it didn't see me. The image was toting a pop gun and a little league cap, hunting imaginary big game that just wasn't there. He's it's beautiful. I stared dreamily through misty eyes as the little dusty boy showed off for this familiar stranger. I was losing myself in this vision as I dared myself to speak, and while choking on my words, the corner of my eyes spied the figure of a strange man glaring at me suspiciously, contemptuously. I turned to face him and surveyed the defiled vacant space between us. My attention was stolen from that delightful child, that youthful picture, oblivious rapture of perfection, to address this custodian of land and walls that will always in some way belong to me and to that little boy that suddenly stopped playing when my jaw twitched and wrinkles formed above my eyes. The barking of those wretched dogs was so intense that it pulled me out of what was left of my dream state and the rest of my surroundings abruptly appeared. He stood three feet from the stump of a tree that was surrounded by refuse and junk. He stood three feet from the stump of a tree that once bore glorious fruit and beauty. He stood three feet from the stump of a tree that my father planted and glared at me as if to say, I have no business here. The virtuous boy disappeared altogether as I held back tears of anger and disgrace. I shot daggers at that man's face through bloody eyes as I surveyed further. That's when I noticed a framed outline of another child in the window, clutching a peeling window sill that he had no business leaning on and looked to his father pompously as if to ask what my problem was. I leered at him with indignity and pride as I knew inside that he could spend his entire lifetime among those bricks that my father lay on that once pristine desert land we tilled with our own hands and never catch as many lizards and snakes as I had by his age. It was amidst this rage that I realized that the few moments I had just spent in the shoes of that beautiful child in the field had not made me better, but worse. You see, that dusty, sandy little boy in the field, that apparition of days gone forever, was my innocence. 
He represented the only lasting joy I've ever known, and the sight of him made me bitter as memories of fear, violence, and indulgence that stole from me what could have been, and the harsh realization that lost innocence can never be regained lay siege upon my consciousness, and the insidious barking roared within my skull. The imagination wanted, my imagination wanted them to stop looking at me like that. It wanted them out of my house, off my rightful land, that arid sand that cushioned my boyish steps during the best days of my life. We cherished those four and a half acres and entreated them with life and love, not corrugated metal shacks and trash heaps. <laughs> I wish those dogs could just shut the hell up. I just wanted to come home. I just wanted to see if my innocence still played among those Coachella tumbleweeds and still climbed those Catazon trees. I walked away and wiped my face with my sleeve and wondered, where is home? Is it where your telephone rings and they deliver your mail? Is it where your mama lives? Is it where you come from or where you are now? <laughs>